Day 80, by the grace of God, he has helped us into season 6, the 80th day. I welcome you, beloved Dr. Malcolm David, transmitting this on the 21st of August 2022 at 11.34 in Nairobi, Kenya. We commence with a word of prayer. Everlasting King, open our eyes to see wonderful things out of your law. We pray that the word of God will become flesh and even as we read it and memorize it and internalize it, it will come as fresh fire coming from your altar. So we pray, reveal to us deep truths of your word and help us in these few minutes we have with you in this broadcast. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 80. Restore us, O God, is the title of this broadcast from verse 3 of Psalm 80. For the director of music to the tune of the lilies of the covenant of Asaph, a psalm, Hear us, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Je Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might, come and save us. Restore us, O God, make your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. O Lord God Almighty, how long will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made them drink tears by the bowful. You have made us the source of contention for our neighbors. And our enemies mock us. Restore us, O God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its bows to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. Why have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass by pick its grapes? Boars of the forest ravage it, and the creatures of the field feed on it. Return to us, O God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine. Watch over this vine. The root of your right hand has planted. The sun you have raised up for yourself. Your vine is cut down. It is burnt with fire. At your rebuke, your people perish. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand. The son, the son of man you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Psalm. 1 to 19. The tokens of God's favor is what we have been seeking, and the former blessings are cited as a basis of present deliverance. Asaph is calling on the Lord and praying and saying, Restore us, restore us, restore us. Their king is called the man of God's right hand. This is actually like as he was also under the shepherd, under him who was a great shepherd of Israel. When we read in verse 1, he says, O shepherd of Israel, you that leadeth Joseph like a flock, you thou that dwellest between the cherubim, shine forth. The Christ is a great shepherd whom we must commit our faith to. The restoration that we are seeking for must be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. For there is no obtaining favor with God until we are converted unto him. And there will be no turning back unto him except we submit to his grace. For it is he who turns us. When we confess that it is our own sinful ways which have provoked God to hide his face, we are beginning at the right end and are on the way to victory. O oh God, restore us again. Restore us, O Lord. We seek you, O Lord. Restore us, we pray. Restore us. 
Psalm, uh, Proverbs 2, the value of wisdom. Now, let me mention something about the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is one of those books that you must constantly come to, refer and read and meditate and, 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 res and resist any plan of the enemy to keep you from reading this God's word every single day. It will take you a few minutes, two or three minutes, and you are able to read through an entire proverb by the grace of God. He says, my son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose work is blameless, for he guards the cause of the just and protects the way of the faithful one then you will understand what is right what is just and fair every good path for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul discretion will protect you and understanding will guide you wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men from men whose words are perverse who have left the path of who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Wisdom will save you also from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words, who has left the partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. Surely her house leads down to death and her paths to the springs of the spirits of the dead. None who go to her return or attain the paths of life. Thus you will walk in the ways of the good, and keep to the paths of the righteous. For the upright will live in the land, and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the unfaithful will be torn from it. Beloved, this is how wisdom is obtained and used, the unspeakable advantage of true wisdom. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse number 5, we find a principle. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, they should ask. Now, the principle is not only for wisdom, but for any area that there is lack. We need restoration, we should ask. We need provision, we should ask. And when we ask, we must have the, the heart and the mind must speak the same thing. This is where we have to exalt the Lord Jesus above our faith and above our words and above everything. We must put our confidence fully upon the Lord. God has provided that those who are sincerely disposed to do his will will have that knowledge and understanding necessary for them. As you purpose to do the will of God, he will give you the knowledge necessary and the understanding necessary. His wisdom will preserve you from men of corrupt principles whose business is to, is to debauch lives and from men and from men and women of corrupt practices. This is what God will do when you have sought him and you are looking to him. God has provided that those who are sincere and are sincere to do his will, that they will, they will have the right knowledge and understanding necessary for them. I pray for you. May the Lord give you the necessary knowledge and understanding for what you have to undertake. He says that he will, he will, he will, you know, his will is that shall have that knowledge and understanding necessary for them. So may that knowledge and understanding that is necessary for you be released upon you in the name of Jesus. And may his wisdom preserve us and may the Lord restore us. Ecclesiastes 8, beloved of the Lord. Ecclesiastes telling us also more about wisdom and I encourage you to keep the king's command as it says in the book of Ecclesiastes. You know, heavenly wisdom makes a man a good man. It emboldens you against adversaries, their attempts, their scorn. This wisdom teaches you that sentence may be passed by a righteous judge against all evil works. Even though the execution of the sentence is long delayed, that it shall be well at the end for those who fear God. 
This we see in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8. In fact, I can just read two verses here and then we move on in Ecclesiastes 8, 11 and Ecclesiastes 8, 12. And that would be a good thing. So it says this. When a sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, people's hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong. Although a wicked person who commits a hundred crimes may live a long time, I know it will go better for those who fear God who are reverent to his name. O oh Lord, restore us. Hosea chapter number 9. Hosea 9. This is where we are coming to, the book of Hosea. And the Lord is good, is helping us and we are moving on in him. Hosea chapter 9. Hosea. This is, you know, Jehovah's response. It's continued. If you have been reading from the book of Hosea chapter 1, today is the ninth day of reading the book of Hosea. And we see how God is relating with the nation of Israel. And it's continued, you know, turning away from God. So Jehovah's response is continued about Israel's coming distress because of sin. Beloved, we need to turn away from, from sin and run towards the Lord for he is faithful and he is just and we will not reap the wild wind. Do not rejoice, O Israel. Do not be jubilant like the other nations for you have been unfaithful to your God. You love the wages of a prostitute at every threshing floor. Threshing floors and wine presses will not feed the people. The new wine will fail them. Verse 3, they will not remain in the Lord's land. Ephraim will return to Egypt and eat unclean food in Assyria. They will not pour out wine offerings to the Lord, nor will their sacrifices please them. Such sacrifices will be to them like the bread of mourners. All who eat them, all, all who eat them will be unclean. This food will be for themselves. It will not come into the temple of the Lord. What will you do on the day of your appointed feast, on the festival days of the Lord? Even if they escape from destruction, Egypt will gather them and Memphis will bury them. Their treasures of silver will be taken over by briars and thorns will overrun their tents. The days of punishment are coming. The days of reckoning are at hand. Let Israel know this. Because your sins are so many and your hostility so great, the prophet is considered a fool. The inspired man, a maniac. The prophet, along with my God, is the watchman over Ephraim. Yet snares await him on all his paths and hostility in the house of his God. They have sunk deep into corruption. As in the days of Gibeah, God will remember their wickedness and punish them for their sins. Hosea chapter 9 verse 10. Make sure you follow it along in your Bible. Hallelujah. When I found Israel, it was like finding grapes in the desert. When I saw your fathers, it was like seeing the early fruit. It was like seeing the early fruit. Mm. It says, do not, it says what? This is. We are in Hosea chapter 9. And the word of the Lord is coming expressly to us. In verse 10 says, When I found Israel, it was like finding grapes in the desert. When I saw your fathers, it was like seeing the early fruit of the fig tree. But when they came to Baal Pure, they consecrated themselves to that shameful idol and became as vile as the thing they loved. Ephraim's glory will fly away like a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, no conception. Even if they rear children, it, I will bereave them of everyone. Woe to them when I turn away from them. I have seen Ephraim like Tyre planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim will bring out their children to the slayer. Give them, O Lord, what will you give them? 
Give them wombs that miscarry and breasts that are dry. Mm. Because of all their wickedness in Gilgal, I hated them there. Because of their sinful deeds, I will drive them out of my house. I will no longer drive them. I will, I will drive them out of my house. I will no longer love them. All their leaders are rebellious. Ephraim is blighted. Their root is withered. They yield no fruits. Even if they bear children, I will slay their cherished offspring. My God will reject them because they have not obeyed him. They will be wanderers among the nations. Joy is a forbidden fruit to those who have broken covenant with God. Until they return and make their peace with God. If men make things of the world and flesh their portion, it is just with God to deny them the comfort of them and to bring man to the sense of his folly. The day of recompense hastens on space toward all who go a warring from God. Those who go away in their prostitution, those who go away consecrating themselves to their idols. Can you imagine that? Instead of setting yourself apart to God, you set yourself apart to idols. You ask me, how can we set ourselves apart to idols? It's very possible. You can be an idol. Your children can be an idol. Your work can be an idol. You can set yourself apart for an idol. And when you set yourself, yourself apart from an idol, the word of the Lord tells us clearly that he will punish Israel. And this shows that even for them that have set themselves up for wickedness and darkness, the Lord will cause and give them wombs that miscarry and breasts that are dry. You see that? When we see that kind of a situation happening, even among a community, there's a, an area where there's a territorial spirit that you find all the women just miscarry their babies. There's no happiness and joy in those families because of certain things in an area. We must pray and ask the Lord to restore us. Beloved, today we commence the lovely book of Romans. Romans! Chapter 1. Hallelujah. I just bring an introduction and then we will be blessed of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans chapter 1 carries the comfort to the church at Rome. This is also being called the cathedral of the Christian faith. I want to mention you and welcome you into 16 days of the book of Romans. We're going to be proclaiming the word of God every single time. Sometimes we just bring a quick summary, even just like as we are going to do now. But I want to encourage you to study the book of Romans while we are on this journey of 150 days of Psalms. We have done this before. We have been able to proclaim from chapter 1 to chapter 16, every single verse and every single chapter. We bless the Lord that now we come again, even as the Lord helps us in the mighty name of Jesus. The words of comfort to the church at Rome. The universe, a revelation of power and the deity of God. The deplorable condition of the lost world. This in the book of Romans is what is bringing. That God has made himself known to all men by the things of his creation. That's why you can never say, how about that person that is deep in the Amazon forest who has never heard about Jesus Christ? The sun is evident to him. The moon is evident to him. Though men know he exists, he exists and might infer that it was their duty to worship him only. They glorify him not as God but ascribe deity to the most contemptible creatures that you may ever think of. This is one of the things that we see, and God hands them over to the desires of their hearts, and you know some of those desires are not praiseworthy. Those who dishonor God will be given up eventually to dishonor themselves. I repeat this to you, those who thus dishonor the Lord will be given up eventually to dishonor themselves. 
We see the carnality in Romans chapter 1 verse number 24. It says, Wherefore God also gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. The men exchange their desires for other for women for other men, and the women exchange their desires for men for other women. This we see it in the book of Romans chapter 1. The demonstration of the deity of Christ is his resurrection from the dead. The sign of Jonah the prophet was intended for the last conviction. Those who will not be convinced that it will not be uh, that those will not be convinced by that will not be convinced by anything. Not being convinced that Jonah stayed inside the belly of a fish three days, three nights, escaping all the digestion inside the fish, and was poured out on the land. It will be hard for you to get any convincing. I pray, may the Lord restore us back to himself. In Jesus' name. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. It says that it is by grace through faith that you have been saved. It's not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10. For we are a workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God ordained that we should walk in them. That is what I want to leave in your spirit from Ephesians 2. Colossians, Colossians 2 as well. There was also something I want to deposit in your spirit from this place. Because God incarnate in Christ, the Godhead incarnate, is in Christ Jesus. And there is danger of those who have been enticed from Christ. Philosophy and legality, mysticism and asceticism. All these philosophies of men do not touch, do not touch, do not handle. The book of Colossians chapter 2. Believers who understand the perfections of Christ have a well-settled judgment of the great truths of the gospel. And this is why I encourage you to discover this word is not just a normal book. Many may sell it in bookshops but may never know what is inside contained. I bought this Bible in a bookshop that does not contain believers. But I want to tell you that this word of God is living. It is active. God himself has exalted the word above himself, above his name. And that's why in the beginning was the word. Hallelujah. You need to know that you will be preserved from all the ensnaring of the world and the, corrupt, the corruption of the gospel principles. Because all true Christianity is about the salvation that is complete in Jesus Christ. And we need not to pin our faith on the opinions of philosophers or bear the yoke of ceremonial law. The yoke of ceremonial law is not our portion. Christ alone is the hope of glory and in him we are complete. Beloved, Colossians 2 verse 10, I'll give you some verses. Colossians 2 3, Colossians 2, 6, Colossians 2, 7, Colossians 2, 8, Colossians 9, and 10. So basically from Colossians 2, verse 3, all the way to verse 10, very strong words. In verse 10, it says, we are complete in him, which is the Godhead of all principality and power. Christ is the head of all the principalities on the power. Christ is the true wisdom of God. And he is of God made wisdom to the humble. He says in, where we've read in Proverbs 2, that then wisdom will enter your heart. Mm. Discretion will protect you, understanding will guard you. Beloved, it's a joy to ask God. 
Let the fullness of the Godhead that dwells in Christ rest upon my life. O my Father, restore us again. Revelation 11. Revelation 11. By the grace of God. We come to Revelation 11. And this we will proclaim and then move on and conclude the broadcast by the grace of God. Revelation 11. The word of the Lord from Revelation Revelation chapter 11, I will proclaim it and then the Lord will help us to conclude. Revelation 11. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, Go and measure the temple of the Lord and the altar and count the worshippers there. But exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it was being given to the Gentiles. They will trample on it on the holy city for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses. They will prophesy for 1,260 days, draw cloth in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have the power to shut the sky so that they will not rain during the time they are prophesying. They have the power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt where also their God was crucified. For three and a half years, for three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will be celebrate and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because of the two prophets that tormented them, tormented those who live in the earth. And verse 11 says, but after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet. Terror struck them that saw them, and they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Come up here, and they went up to heaven in a cloud. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake. A tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet. And there were loud voices in heaven that said, The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who are seated on the thrones fell before the Lord, fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The seventh trumpet is the trumpet of worship. O oh Lord, restore us. Restore us, O oh God. You are there, you are not born again. Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I will pray for you now as we conclude. Father, we are here thanking you for connecting us together and for restoring our hearts, Lord. Even for this one that have confessed with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in their heart and turned away from their sin, that Jesus, you reigned and you died for us. Father, we pray even at this night and this day, this afternoon, that you will restore us. We put our confidence in you and put our trust in you. We know that, Father, at the seventh trumpet, everything must worship. The 24 elders, and those that are surrounding the throne, all of them, Lord, we join in unison and worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.